Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am taking some time out of my schedule and I am putting together some rope mods for my buddies. And I'm also putting together some daisy chain for a few other buddies of mine. So I'm gonna be spending a little bit of time doing some rope mods and daisy chains. I've already got three of the rope mods done and I figured on the fourth one here, I would take a little bit of time and just put a video together for quick reference for all of those that are interested in doing that, you know, that it, it's locked in the archives and maybe this video would come up and help help uh, instruct or give ideas for people that are just getting into this kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into this, uh, this rope mod for this API climbing stick. All right, so real quickly, here are some of the tools that you will definitely, you'll definitely need while doing this. You'll need a Samson splicing kit. Uh, looks kind of like this guy right here you can find this you can find this on amazon and basically all you have to do is search uh samson splicing kit for braided ropes it comes with a bunch of a bunch of different fids the fids are these guys right here they're basically a uh hollow thre threading needle and so these are part of the tool kit that you'll need but they come with this uh splicing kit you also uh, need one of these pushers. Again, that'll come with a, a splice kit, the splice kit that you get from Amazon. Uh, you need a tape measure. You also need a lighter, some shrink, some shrink wrap, shrink tubing. Those come in handy. And when I say you need a lighter and the shrink wrap, you don't need it, but that's what I use to finish up the ends of mine. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Also, you might might need a or might like a pair of scissors. Uh, some guys, they they cut some of the ends of the rope off so it makes a nicer splice. Uh, we could do that, I and mean, you don't have to do that. That's just personal preference. So let's get started first. Uh, here's my rope. This is a, a, a quarter inch ATV winch rope. It has a 6,500 pound strength rating. I don't know what we got, probably 18 feet here or something like that. Uh, that's quite, quite a bit of material. So what I'm going to do is you start from the end. Now, now what I'm making here is a uh, seven foot, or excuse me, an eight foot rope uh, rope mod. And so there's some measurements that I, I've worked out and it, really simple. Um, to do that first, you, you'll just need to, uh, I do a seven, a seven inch tag. And so in other words, this, this is what's going to be spliced into itself after I make my final Brummel splice. And so I'll just take and mark it seven inches so I know. Um, which brings me to another tool that you might need and that's a marker. Usually I use a Sharpie marker. I just happen to have this in arm's reach. So I'll mark that. That will be my, my final, my final, you know, uh, splice. I'll tag that in and then I worked it out with the particular Versa button that goes on the API sticks. You can just measure from that marking, just measure uh, four and a half inches. And so I'll put that there and measure out four and a half inches. And, and this measurement here is, so when you first start your Versa button, bus, button splice, um, and all of that is complete. Basically when you splice that into itself, that is enough to slip tightly, tightly over a Versa button. And so that's what that measurement is for. You know, they're the Versa buttons or whatever you might have might differ. So what you could do when you're making yours is you mark that seven inch, seven inches from the end, and then take that mark and go wrap it, wrap it around your Versa button, you know, and, and make sure it's a tight slip over, just hold it like that and slip it over your button, make sure it fits on there tight. And then you can just kind of mark mark where that tight spot would be and then just kind of unfold it and measure that and then that that would be your measurement for this particular versa button it's four and a half inches so once you do that what we're going to do is we're going to be we're going to begin our uh, brummel splice it's a brummel locking splice essentially and so we're going to go ahead and do that what you're going to need this is where these fids come in handy uh, you're going to just basically separate uh, by pushing, pushing together, separate that. And then what you'll do is you'll feed your, feed your fit right through the middle. And that's as simple, easy to do. And then from there, you will take the other end of your rope. 
just push it right into the back of that fit and you can see how easily and I'm going to go slow here how easily that goes right through uh, so what I got here is is the start of the knot all I've done is I've pushed the back end of the rope right through the middle of the front end where we've been making our measurements now if you just go ahead and of course I got a ton of rope here I could have cut this down a little bit more but I'm just going to feed I'm just going to feed this rope all the way through till finally finally we get to the other end here and now now you can see one rope we measured the front half of it we took the back half and now we brought it through the center of the front portion of the rope that we were uh, marking and measuring now you can see right here is where my green measurement is the four and a half inches here is or excuse me here is the seven inch measurement from this end and now you can see the green right here is that four and a half inch measurement so I'm basically going to take this right like that till I can see that green come out the other side and what I'm doing here is that is my Versa button my Versa button hold so this is the start of that Brummel splicing knot. And what you have here is you have your you have your initial Versa button loop. And so your green marking, you're going to take and you're going to scrunch up the rope that you have just braided through or you pulled through. Go ahead and take your fed, press it through the center of the rope. Like so. Now what you want to do, is you're going to take this end of the rope and simply feed it through. You know what, I'm going to grab a slightly larger fid for the sake of splicing or for the sake of running this frayed end through. So that will kind of fit in this one a little bit better. Just push it in. And I, I call it the figure eight. I mean, it's technically a Brummel splicing knot. There's a figure eight. Yes, figure eight, whatever uh, Brummel knot is, and so and I'm taking taking my time here, but you can see when you pull this through, you got your ass or your figure eight. Um, you're pulling it through, and that's making a it's making a lock on itself. Without this one, this end of the rope going through itself again, this knot could slide either way it wanted to. So when you put this this second S8 Brummel, whatever you want to call it, you put that one in there and you pull that tight, all of a sudden that makes that Brummel splice and it locks that in together. So it's not going to go this way, it's not going to go that way. And so that's that's the, the first part of your knot. And then lastly, again, this, this is very, very easy. It's very simple. Matter of fact, uh, I think when I had gotten into it and I was doing them yesterday, I could run three of these and I could do, I could do one of them in like three minutes. Just, it's that simple, that easy. And then, so from this point of the video, we're going to, uh, we're going to tag this or tuck this end within the center of the rope. And so we'll splice it down through the center, which will help it hold and make that, that Chinese finger trap uh, type of, type of hold coupled with this Bromo splice. So this is how you do that. Essentially, you're going to, some guys, some guys at this point in time, what they'll do here, and I'll just show you for the sake of the video, is they'll start to pull off, they'll start to pull off some of these, these strands. If there's just say 12 strands, they'll take six of these strands and they'll, they'll cut them. And I'll just show you for the, you don't have to do it. Some guys do it for a nicer, a nicer splice. And if you don't have sharp scissors, scissors, this stuff is tough to cut. And what they do is they just grab, there's some really good, while I'm doing this, I'll just talk, there's some really good channels out there. And uh, 
for, for new guys like myself um, or newer guys like myself that have great references. And so I'm going to be putting together a video of just all these quick references that will lead lead people to some of these top top YouTubers or people that have been doing this DIY stuff for a while and have some great content that, that you know they're out there to help other people out. So I'm going to put together one of those things, one of those videos. So let's just let's just end with that. Again, this is just something you don't have to do, but you can see how that will make kind of like a tapered end in that splice. And so So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the fit again. And we'll make sure that you can see this all right. Here you have your Brummel knot. Nice and tight. Okay. This is the end that needs to be tagged. This is the seven inches that we originally measured. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the main rope now and we're going to kind of split it. And right, right at the base of that Brummel knot, we're going to start feeding this, this fid right up through the center of the rope. Just push this rope. And I have, I've done, done three with uh, AM Steel. AM Steel works amazing. It's great. Uh, this stuff here, it, it, it separates even better. Basically, all I'm doing is feeding this fid right up through the center of the rope. You can see, I'll get a little closer for you. You can see how it just makes that accordion and you can push it right up the center with ease. Feed that like so. And then I'm, I'm almost exhausted my whole fit up in there. And so you can see um, what I'll do now is I'll just push that fit through one of the ends. That's going to be a lot longer than seven inches, especially whenever I start, you know, pulling it back down. So, so at this point in time, um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this other fit right through the back and I'm going to feed it. I'm just going to feed that bigger one through so that again I won't have I won't have that problem. Just bring it right down towards the end. Now this is where you take your cut end. And you could tape this, you could do whatever you wanted to help it out, but I think for the most part it's all going to fit in there this larger fit. Let's get that little thread in there. There you go. This is where your pusher is going to come in handy. Okay, now I'm actually going to swap hands. But once you feed that in there, you're going to take this and you make sure you get the bulk of this, this thread. And all you got to do is push the back of that fit. Just push the fit right out. Okay. So as you can see, what I've done is I have essentially pushed the rope right through the center of itself. I'm trying to exaggerate that and pull this down, but you can see there what I mean. So this in itself is what they call the Chinese finger trap. You put your finger in it and when you pull against it, it, it constricts itself and you won't be able to move. So that's a good knot and it definitely would hold, but as soon as there's a relax and pressure, then you could just pull that right back out. So that's where this Brummel splice comes in handy. This Brummel splice will lock this loop. So regardless if you had this Chinese finger trap, uh, it would still hold itself. And so the, the Brummel splice plus this trap right here is what really, really helps. And, and it look, looks good. So at this point in time, all you're going to do is you're going to take your rope up here and you're going to start to put pressure on pressure on it. I'm just going to slip my fingers in here and you're just going to slowly pull this back down. And you're going to take out that accordion. 
uh, as we had it all scrunched up, we're just slowly pulling it back on itself. Like so. And as you can see, that's all you need. And so again, for the tapered area, you, if you, you see it's, it's, you know, a certain diameter, you got two ropes on each other. And then when you cut those threads, it'll just taper it down here. So it makes it a nice, nice tapered effect. Otherwise it might end abruptly, but really um, it's not an effect in my book. Don't matter to me either way. Um, but that does make a nice little, little taper. So anyway, there you have it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the tape measure. I'm going to measure out um, from this loop. I want to measure all the way out to eight feet and then we'll tag back in really quickly. So I've measured out eight feet and, and if, if you are doing it to where you're just going to cut the rope before you measure it, all you'd have to do is take eight feet and then add the seven inches for your tag and then add the four and a half inches for your loop. So that would give you, give you right about where you need it to be. So what I'm going to do, since I got extra rope, I'm just going to simply hack through this. Hack through this. Here's the line I want. You could use electrical tape, melt that if you wanted. Um, I got a little bit of just shrink tubing. I'm just going to try to pile that all in there. Like so, I don't know, maybe, maybe give yourself an inch, cut it, and then I pull, pull right back over, just, I mean, maybe an eighth of an inch over the end. I'm just going to melt that down in. Get that nice and hot. Carefully compress it some. There we go. Perfect. All right, and now what we have here is an eight foot rope mod for the climbing sticks. have API API stick right here fits nice and tight right over the verse button so there we go got an eight foot rope mod climbing stick Fits nice over the Versa button, wraps around a couple of times, makes it a little bit lightweight, and uh, it only takes literally three minutes to do, and uh, can definitely cut some weight off of your system, your setup. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to throw together another daisy chain video. I'm getting ready to make about four or five of those, uh, actually six of those, and so I'll do a quick tutorial on that, and then I'll post these up. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, good luck out in the woods.